serious. It's fun. It's your Catholic drive time. With Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. Joining us right now via Zoom chat is E. Michael Jones, Dr. E. Michael Jones. He's the author of a book called Logos Rising and a History of Ultimate Reality, but put out by Fidelity Press, a press which he founded. Good morning to you, Dr. Jones. Good morning. Good to be here. Praise be to God. It's good to have you back on our show. Last time we talked about revolutions and uh, and their uh, the fruit of the revolutions in society, and we wanted to continue that conversation with uh, logos rising. Now you you've gone through a fair bit of of censorship in your life and your work, especially uh, recently. Uh, do you would you say logos rising got you in more trouble than even the uh, uh, your book on the spirit of Jewish revolution? No. No, not at all. Uh, the Jewish Revolutionary Spirit uh, was the big book in terms of censorship. Uh, it offended a powerful group. Uh, uh, by the way, the second edition is coming out. It's been out for 12 years now. First edition and nothing that I said uh, has made me, given me pause. Uh, it was right on target then. It was ahead of its time. And now it is part of what's going on right now. Uh, in case you missed it. Uh, the Jerusalem Post accused Sean Hannity of being an anti-Semite just the other day. <laughs> oh, wow. If there was ever a man who spent his time licking the boots of powerful <laughs> Jews like Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, it was Sean Hannity. Um, so we're in the middle of a moral panic right now, where, uh, like the Salem witch trial, where anybody can be accused of witchcraft, except the modern witchcraft is known as anti-Semitism. Mm. But no, Logos, it does have relevance to what to Logos Rising, because Logos Rising, the center of that book, um, is uh, the the great moment of of evangelization in human history, which is basically when Saint Paul gets expelled from the synagogues. Mm. The Jews were determined that this message was not going to get out, and they did everything within their power. It's all in the Acts of the Apostles. We we're reading it now at Mass, uh, where they, the, the uh, Sanhedrin comes to people like Paul or Stephen, and they say, well, you're not allowed to mention that name. Well, that name is Logos. Mm. <laughs> we're talking about the Logos incarnate, and they don't want that word to spread. And so it led to a crisis in the Catholic Church at that moment. Paul simply could not get into the synagogues anymore. Yeah. And that at this moment, uh, he has a vision. And there's a man, he's in Ephesus on the, uh, on the uh, Aegean Sea. And he sees a man from the other side beckoning him, telling him to come over. Well, that's Greece. Uh, Paul could. Peter couldn't. Peter, Peter didn't speak Greek, but Paul did. Hmm. And so Paul went over there. Uh, and this is the this is the moment we have to be able to speak to the Gentiles now. And the Gentiles speak Greek, and so he goes over there, and he has this big moment uh, in Athens at the Areopagus, and he stands up there and he says, "I want to tell you about this man. Uh, this man rose from the dead." And at that point, everybody says, "Oh, okay. Well, we'll talk to you some other time." And he, they walk out. He failed. This was the first speech that he made to the to the Greek Greek world, and he blew it. Mm -hmm. And why did he blow it? Blow it because he couldn't address their concerns. This is a new group of people. You can't start off the way Saint Matthew did by giving a genealogy of Hebrew uh, uh, Hebrew genealogy because they don't know who these people are. And I'm saying in my book, the center of my book, uh, Logos Rising, is basically that I think St. John was aware of this. Mm. Uh, St. John uh, knew about the failure at the Areopagus. He knew that this was a new era. He knew that they had to uh, have a new way of approaching the the uh, Greek-speaking Gentiles. And so he came up with the prologue to his gospel which is one of the most profound statements in human history, and it's a turning point in human history. So he says, in arche en ha logos, in the beginning there was logos. Now, we translate it, in the beginning there was the word, and that makes it completely incomprehensible. I'm sorry, I, I've read it for my entire life, and if, if you use the word word, it's going to be incomprehensible. I don't know what that means. I have to use the word logos. That's why I use it, because 
Only that word has the richness that you need to understand what John is talking about here. He's drawing on an entire tradition of Greek thought, Greek philosophy, that began when they decided, the uh, people like Thales, uh, 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 physicists, decided they wanted to understand the ultimate reality. Was it water? That's what Thales said. Was it air? That's what Anaximenes said. Uh, when Heraclitus said it was fire, he then also said it was logos, because fire is like energy, and logos is an abstract principle, and this was the beginning of abstract philosophical thought. And St. John and God, I mean, we're talking about God here, okay? The Holy Spirit is the author of scriptures, but through St. John, God validated Greek philosophy. He honored what they had done because it was an honest attempt to understand ultimate reality. And that's the word that John used. So in the beginning, there was logos, kai logos and prostheon, and logos was with God, and logos, kai logos and theos, and logos is God. Logos is God. This was an incredible breakthrough in thought. And those last two sentences would be food for thought for the next 300 years because they are the root of our understanding of the Trinity. It took uh, 300 years to the Council of Nicaea before they figured out exactly the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. So this is why this, this word is important, and this book is about basically the whole— if the Jewish revolutionary spirit is about logos, anti-logos, this is the opposite side of the story. This is the history of logos. And I couldn't have written the Jewish revolutionary spirit without using the word logos, because when the Jews rejected Christ, they rejected logos. And when they rejected logos, they became revolutionaries. And that's what they've been ever since. As long as there are Jews, there are going to be people who are rejecting Logos. So this is the other side of the coin. This is the history of Logos in itself and how that enabled the culture that we have today. The reason I want to bring this up is because I want you to touch upon the desire of every person for that which is greater than himself, but that which was revealed over time as Logos, as you say. But I also want you to hit upon where the church goes, so does society. And today I read a bunch of uh, headlines about schism and and corruption and and, and the faithful being led astray through uh, bishops and, and priests and our own sinful choices. And is it any wonder then we see around us in society that is totally decaying and collapsing around us? Dr. Jones. Yes. The, the main problem with the church is the church right now accepts the commands of its oppressors. It, 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 this is the worst thing you can do. Uh, you're constantly being confronted with uh, issues and to, being told what to think about the issues. COVID is the classic example of what I'm talking about. The church has said, oh, it's a vaccine. No, it's not a vaccine. There's your mistake. If you think it is, you're going to go down the wrong path. OK, now this let's back up here. Why? Why do we think uh, why are we talking about COVID or how do they talk about COVID? Well, that's science. And you can't argue with science. If I know this because I have people in my neighborhood have pe 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 signs on their front yard. Black Lives Matter. Science is real. OK, so I can't argue with anybody who can't, has a white lab coat on. <laughs> How did this come about? It came about, uh, and I discussed this in the book, uh, by a, a Frenchman by the name of uh, René Descartes, who was a Catholic, but divided the world up into uh, res extenso, which is the world out there, and res cositans, which is the world inside your mind. Uh, there's a radical dichotomy here that was introduced, and it enabled science, but it also, uh, where, where are we going to put religion? Uh, if that's the division, well, is it out there in the universe? No, it's in your mind. Well, if it's in your mind, then it's a private thing. If it's a private thing, don't impose it on the rest of us. We have science for that. That's the role of science. And so by accepting that, by accepting this role of science, the church has basically marginalized itself and turned itself into something subjective and personal and therefore don't impose it on anyone else. And so that, that led to the disruption, the destruction of the social fabric because it's based on the moral law, which is universal and not personal. OK, that's that's the that's what led us into the problem we have today. Hey, Michael Jones, um, the a question I had was the modern world seems to have 
abandoned logos as a whole, uh, not simply in the idea of reason, like in terms of the Greek philosophers, the era like Aristotle, Plato, uh, and the Greek classics like the Iliad and the Odyssey. These things are are culturally inappropriate nowadays. There, uh, and so people reject them. In the modern world, how do we reclaim a sense of logos, uh, not only in the idea of reason, but also in Christ? How do we go back to to those roots? How do we bring that back in in, in education? in society the first the first thing you have to understand that the the, the log when you use the word logos you eliminate that whole dichotomy between faith and re science religion and science that conflict goes completely out of out of out of the room because logos is the order of the universe created by god you're part of that order your mind is part of that order. Your mind is a special uh, creation of God that allows, be, allows you to understand the order of the universe. The order of the universe is also the order, uh, an order that tells you how to act. You have a body that was created with certain uh, uh, functions. Okay, If you want to understand those functions, that's Logos. So to the crucial uh, issue in our age has always been sexuality. Okay, is there an order to sexuality or is there not? If you look at it as it is, it seems to be ordered to procreation. But then you have these people who come along and say, no, no, we can, that's not an order because we have a pill that will make you sterile. That doesn't change. The fact that you take a pill that makes you sterile doesn't change that order of creation. Your happiness depends on, first of all, understanding the order of creation and then acting according to it. That's known as morality. Morality is practical reason. Morality is reason. It's rational behavior. If you want to behave, if you want to be happy as a rational creature, you have to follow re reason in the universe, which is known as logos. There's no other path to happiness. E. Michael Jones, yes. The uh, the thing that I was I was reading recently about different uh, the early psychologist and and I remember I can't remember who it was. You probably would remember the one of the psychologists was saying how instead of trying to destroy the church with reason and arguments, they have to introduce sexual immorality into the church and into the people and into the clergy, and that will destroy the faith instead. So it seems like they are they recognize that the logos right. is uh, is not you can't destroy it, and so there has to you have to work around it. You have to get them to forget about it. Uh, what, your comments on that? Yeah, that was Wilhelm Reich, uh, a, a German a, a Jew psychiatrist, a student of Freud, a member of the Communist Party, and he realized that nobody was interested in the the, the doctrine of the Communist Party, but everyone was interested in sex. And so he was the man who created the term sexual revolution. Mm. And that's exactly what he said. Don't argue with a seminarian. Just uh, get the seminarian to act uh, against the moral law and the idea of God will evaporate. That is the program. I, I describe that program in my book, uh, Libido Dominandi, Sexual Liberation and Political Control. Reich was a crucial theoretician in the strategy to destroy the Catholic Church. Reich ended up uh, uh, in prison, uh, b died in prison in 1957 uh, in the United States, but he ended up on the cover of, of uh, the New York Times Magazine in 1970 because he played a crucial role in the revolution of 1968 in, in Paris at that time. That Over this period of time, the left became sexualized. The Marxists stopped talking about economics and they started talking about sex. They all followed Reich da down this path uh, because they saw how effective it was. The classic example is Ireland. I just did a show on Ireland. They were completely subverted by the sexual revolution that Reich had proposed, the discrediting of the Catholic Church because of the abuse crisis and so on and so forth. He's a crucial figure. E. Michael Jones is our guest. We have, I don't know, about three, four minutes left in our conversation with him. We're talking about Logos Rising, his book. We posted a link to it, by the way, uh, but you can find it uh, over on Fidelity Press. Uh, Dr. Jones, do you, do you find it at all uh, fascinating or interesting or even alarming that so many in our society today 
are embracing what they think is uh, so good socialism. I mean, we see the Black Lives Matter and Tifa, but Ocasio Cortez and, and our Congress and Bernie Sanders and and just the, the the people down the road from us in our neighborhoods and our in our schools they they seem to be embracing uh, Marxist socialism. Do they have any idea what they uh, they seem to be espousing leads to destruction and death? Dr. Jones, what would you say? No, they don't, because so socialism has changed. It's always changing. And so, as I said before, Marxism was talking about economics, but with the arrival of Reich, with the arrival of the Frankfurt School, with the arrival of people like Michel Foucault, the whole pro approach of socialism changed to basically sexual subversion. That's why the sexual issues are absolutely crucial to uh, preserving a free society. If you want, if you turn away from the moral law as interpreted by the Catholic Church, you will end up a slave. And if you want a classic example, look at what happened in Ireland the precipitous fall of a Catholic country, all because of the embrace of sexual revolution. It's been a disaster for the Irish people, and now they are slaves to big tech uh, firms like Google and big pharma, uh, the companies they invited into their country for jobs and turned out to enslave them. So, all right, last question with just a few minutes left. What do we do? How do we fight the anti-logos? How do we win back our society? First, first of all, we have to begin with consciousness. We have to understand what happened. Uh, what, ha who does, how did those Catholic neighborhoods get destroyed? The uh, this is, I've spent my entire adult life, 40 years now, trying to figure out what happened to me as a guinea pig in these experiments of social engineering and sexual manipulation. That's why I wrote books like The Slaughter of Cities, Urban Renewal, Ethnic Cleansing, uh, Libido Dominandi, Sexual Liberation and Political Control. The church does not understand psychological warfare. That's why they are losing every battle. The church cannot uh, identify the enemy. The church has to be get up to date to understand what's happening to it all right praise be to god where can we find your book i guess you've been you've been deplatformed on amazon so what's the best place to look for your book go to uh, fidelitypress.org or culturewars.com the only place you can find my books now your magazine does it still come out on a regular basis every month culture wars magazine we will be celebrating our 40th anniversary in december monthly magazine also available at culturewars.com and uh, that gets mailed right to them, right to their mailbox. It's all there. We have uh, you can have, buy a paper copy, or you can get it in electronic form. All Either right. Way. Praise be to God. Well, Doctor E. Michael Jones, Logos Rising: A History of uh, Ultimate Reality. It's been a great conversation. I wish we had more time with you, but we're we're down to it. Uh, God bless you, and God love you, Doctor Jones. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, that is going to do it for our number one. It's important for us Catholics to uh, really educate ourselves on to, you know, what is causing these issues in order for us to better understand how we might address them. And so I would encourage you to pick up a copy of Logos Rising. Again, it's found at fidelitypress.org. We posted a link to it on our social feeds. You can find it there as well. But we'll be posting this conversation, this individual conversation with Dr. Jones later today on our YouTube channel, Facebook and elsewhere. And uh, we would encourage you to, to check that out and then to share that. That would be very helpful for us and for spreading the word about the book. All right. Praise be to God. If you can join us in the next hour, we would love to have you. We have, uh, you know, a little bit more fun in the next hour. We're going to do a game show and prizes are involved. So praise be to God for that. Plus the after show where we will conversate about whatever it is you want to talk about. That's coming up in the next hour. You can find the links on our website. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time, where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to Facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's Facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you.